Donald Trump just signed a bill designating $19.5 billion worth of your tax money toward sending a human to Mars by the year 2030, completely ignoring many of the smarter people at NASA and elsewhere within the space and scientific communities who have been saying for years that we could start a moon colony for only $10 billion. So can someone please tell me what on earth is Donald Trump thinking, or in political terms, who got paid off to sell him on this Matt Damon Hollywood nonsense? Trump is a businessman, a New York real-life monopoly player. You'd think that he would have seen the much more obvious business investment choice. Besides, with NASA's track record for success over the past 25 years, such a high-risk mission to Mars would probably fail somewhere along that 225 million mile journey, causing an already low public approval rating to drop to the point that it could very well spell game over for NASA, like you're done. On the other hand, with modern 3D printing technologies, automated construction is becoming cheaper and cheaper. A moon colony will now cost half of what the Mars missions will cost and take almost half the time, seven years as opposed to 13. Instead of investing 20 billion in sending a human to Mars one time, we could invest in building farms and factories on the moon using automated modular self-assembly and other automated construction technologies such as 3D printers, brick and mortar laying robots, solar vitrification, and other innovative computer automated construction methods. Establishing a permanent international docking station on the moon should have been our next plan of action after the first Apollo moon missions. NASA actually had plans for a moon colony, but abandoned them when the Apollo program ended in 1975, mainly because the required robotics and automation technology of the 70s simply wasn't up to the job. During the height of the Cold War space race, Russia was actually planning a mission to send 17 men to begin construction on a Russian moon base, but when the U.S. never pursued a moon colony and instead began stockpiling nuclear weapons and developing ICBMs using NASA rocket technology, the Russians had no choice but to follow suit with the Americans. So here we are, over 40 years later, and 3D printing technology is revolutionizing construction as we know it. Scientists recently figured out a way to make concrete straight from regular lunar or Martian soil by mixing it with a readily abundant mineral called magnesium oxide. They can make rock-hard structures right there on site with a near limitless supply of raw materials. This technology is now just screaming to be packaged up and sent to the moon and Mars and elsewhere. Yet, for some reason, Donald Trump just never got the memo and decided to send meat bags to Mars instead a mission that won't even be launched until long after he's out of office. Before we start shipping humans to Mars, we should probably first have a moon base to launch those missions from, and we should probably use everything we're going to learn about automated droid construction on the moon first before we even start plotting on Mars. A moon colony is such a better investment on so many levels, it really doesn't matter whether NASA succeeds or fails their Mars mission in 2030 because they've already failed simply by choosing such a costly and risky undertaking with little to no return on investment. It's almost as if someone set NASA up for failure with such a ridiculous and distracting mission. Not to mention that by dedicating the next 13 years at NASA towards a manned mission to Mars, this leaves the private space industry as well as the Europeans, Russians, and China now posed for a complete takeover of the moon. Bigelow Aerospace is one such private space company which has been working on plans for a moon colony for quite some time now. This has prompted conspiracy theories about a secret space program, like a billionaire's club which already has a base on the moon and its own chartering service to and from. But I would tend to think it's more likely that somewhere between Trump's White House and NASA, someone got paid off. Trump is in the midst of a quagmire of swamp creatures constantly scheming up ways to prey on his unique personality and ignorance. They probably told him that it would be just like the Apollo programs, but on a much larger scale, and that he could leave behind a legacy like JFK. Sorry, Donald, but you should have continued JFK's legacy, gone back to the moon, and let your Department of the Interior focus on exploiting resources up there instead of in our national parks. 
$19.5 billion was actually pretty close to the budget NASA had before Donald Trump made this big deal press conference, making it sound like he was giving NASA an extra $19.5 billion to fund the Mars missions. Meanwhile, hidden in that bill that Trump probably didn't even read before he signed was a section which cancels all of NASA's funding for atmospheric and climate research. So, quote-unquote, global warming what many scientists consider to be the single greatest threat to humanity, officially cannot exist because there will be no data to support it. Fortunately for us, we don't need Donald Trump or NASA. We can colonize the moon with available technologies and some good old collaboration with the private space industry. We just need to bring enough like-minded people together and figure out a way to organize and fund each stage of the mission. It starts with building and field testing automated construction technologies to engineer something perfect. And then we worry about packaging it up and sending it to work on the surface of the moon, building walls, tunnels, and hobbit holes for future moon habitats. I just don't understand why the world's billionaires aren't already funding this. Like, what else are you going to do with all that money? Seriously though, I want to build droids. I want to build construction and mining droids. And then I want to send those droids to the moon and to Mars. Ten years ago, I helped introduce a lot of the internet to the idea of evacuated tube transport technologies and the idea of overlaying highways with a solar-powered tube transit system that could displace a large portion of motor vehicle traffic while saving massive amounts of energy in the process. And ten years later, prototypes of those technologies are now actually being built and tested in California. I am confident that material science and engineering ingenuity will solve all of the problems that critics have brought up concerning Hyperloop and the long distance ET3. The same exact thing happened during the history of aviation, when people said that man would never fly in heavier than air machines and that airplanes were scientifically impossible. It can be done and it will be done. The Wright brothers got the formula right, and for a long time planes only carried mail and cargo because people were too afraid to fly. So I'm setting a goal for the next 10 years to put automated solar-powered construction droids on the moon by 2027, with or without the help of Donald Trump and NASA. I actually think that by outsourcing technologies and R&D to the private sector, where most of that market is headed anyway, and avoiding the bureaucracy, politics, and government waste that we'd see with NASA, we could bring that cost down to 2 to $4 billion with an estimated return in 15 to 20 years, with exponential growth thereafter, as we sell off living space and timeshare condos on the moon. It seems to me like a pretty good investment idea. The moon is prime real estate, and there are loads of millionaires and billionaires out there who are tired of their yachts, Ferraris, airplanes, and their mansions here on planet Earth, and would just jump at the idea of a moon colony with a hotel tranquility for space tourism. It wouldn't be long before they were selling off chunks of lunar territory like it was the Wild West. Once we have an established moon base, we can plan cities and build pod and tube-based transportation highways with systems of tunnels connecting housing developments to commercial and industrial centers. I also want to build a graphene factory, which will someday build cables for the future space elevator so we can get to space without rockets. The moon colony is such an important stepping stone to so many other things that we need to be doing in space before we even think about sending humans to Mars. That money could be so much better invested elsewhere. For a lot less money, we could learn far more about Mars by sending more advanced rovers equipped with better cameras and probes. Computers and machines can record more data and report it much more accurately than any human, and they can run off solar energy and batteries, and they don't need to eat, piss, breathe, stay warm, or any of the other complications you run into with humans. The future will not wait for NASA. If the U.S. does not build a moon colony, then Russia, China, or somebody else will. So let's be somebody else. I'm tired of being a Terran, and I want to be a moonling. So let's team up for humanity and build our own moon colony. I would really like to connect with companies and individuals out there who are interested in making this moon colony a reality. People who want to see their children and grandchildren have the option to visit and work on the expanding moon colony something that we could be laying the foundations for. I am 35, I have over 15 years experience with construction, machinery, and electronics. 
I have a degree in physics, and I want to start a robotics company that focuses on the design and programming of mobile automated construction and mining droids using 3D printing and other technologies, all built for the primary purpose of mining and construction on other planetary bodies, building habitable structures and accumulating resources in advance of human arrival, starting with a lunar outpost, and then from there we can think about Mars and the rest of the galaxy. There are actually quite a few groups around the world working on plans for a moon colony as we speak. There are also private companies which are actively focused on the future of mining and construction on the moon and in space in general. I'd very much like to interview these people and hear what they have to say. This will not be the last video that I do on this topic, and I do apologize for not making any videos for a while. YouTube took away all my ability to monetize my most popular work, and when my forum went down, I began working more hours during the week and got into the schedule of just doing that. Who knew eight months could fly by so quick? Then I noticed a lot of the people I subscribed to or I was watching newer videos from were talking a lot about this Patreon.com website, which is like a GoFundMe for video producers and artists. It's actually been working pretty well for people, so I figured I would give it a try, and maybe use it as a vehicle to relaunch my YouTube channel. So, if you'd like to help be part of this, please visit patreon.com slash alien scientist or email me with serious inquiries and help me set up more interviews with smarter people. We're going to need more space age control systems engineers, lab technicians, robotics programmers, architectural designers, etc. If you think you can help, Send me your resume. I want to be a force in getting good people linked up with good companies and getting the public engaged in a constant discussion on these technologies and this ongoing project. Please add me on LinkedIn as well. I want to begin with relaunching my YouTube channel and try to establish a crowdfunding base with some new videos on whatever topics people who want to become patrons suggest to me on my Patreon.com page. And if people want to donate or hire me to help them build construction and mining droids or to help them recruit employees for their company, then I can do that too. We definitely need to start 3D printing a moon colony soon and I want to help in any way that I can. You can help too by becoming a Patreon or simply by sharing this video and spreading the word about this topic. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. More amazing videos are coming shortly.